some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome to the discussion for Tenpenny Parks. Uh, one of the newest games, well I guess not new, this came out a couple years ago at this point. I think it was 2022 or 21. Still might be one of the newest. Yeah, uh, I was thinking because it's Thunderworks games and with Vincent Dutre art, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is a unique kind of polyomino game where your restriction really is that you just can't play some adjacent. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Which I find uh, very unintuitive. <laughs> yeah, because that's like everyone else every, you want to pack them. Tightly. Yeah, and it's usually where you uh, where you have to place them. You know, you, wherever you place the first one, they always have to connect, and so on and so forth. This one is like, nah, your rules are just that they can't be adjacent to one another. Um, this is also based off a theme that I think is very underutilized, like the theme park theme. Not counting, yeah. like, Dinosaur Island or Dinosaur World, because yeah. that's a little bit different. Yeah. But, like, actual real-life theme parks is usually not done well, in my opinion. But uh, I think this game is pretty good. Um, after multiple playthroughs, I'm kind of, like, done, you know? Yeah. Because uh, there's not enough variety. This is a game that I feel needs, like, an expansion right? Uh, to kind of keep it lively yeah. yeah but and I, so, so i don't know if they're gonna do it it's i don't think it's bad by any means uh i actually think it's quite good but there are a couple things where i do kind of feel like you're going through the motions um but maybe this is for a different audience than myself so what do you guys think i agree it's an interesting combination of three main core mechanics which is odd to try to keep track of and to functionalize well I, I guess four actually worker placement resource management tile placement mm -hmm. polyomino placement um uh i guess that's the main <laughs> yeah three i was like four could be set collection i guess and a, depending on the goals. yeah depending on your goals so um it's it feels like a lot to start but once you've played through a game then it feels like okay i got this yeah and then i agree with you it kind of feels like is that all there is? Right. Um, which, you know, again, good play, a lot of fun, but it's one that I would want to play a few times and then mm -hmm. probably give to somebody so yeah. they could enjoy it a couple of times. Yeah. Production value is through the roof. I mean, it's yeah. extremely thick cardboard. Oh, yeah. Like, the carousel in the middle is very nice. Uh, I hate the board because I don't get why they didn't just make it bigger. Like, just an mm -hmm. inch bigger so every card can fit on the actual board instead of hanging off. I just think that's so dumb. Like, I actively hate that. It's so stupid. It makes no mm -hmm. sense for why they did that. Except to be like, well, I guess we'll just try and fit it in this weird box. Well, um, maybe it's a standard size box, and that's the compromise that they made. I, They could have done something different. They <laughs> and certainly could have made the box slightly larger if yeah, that was it. I just, I find it very... Or move the tracks to be around the sides instead of all packed on one end yeah to make it a square board yeah um that's kind of like in terms of pr production quality my yeah. only negative uh cat what do you think of the game um i agree with what you said earlier about how like it it was super fun when we played it the first time but like i don't know something about this game like especially like i feel like i didn't do anything different except i just wasn't as zealous so like i didn't do like as well mm -hmm. as i would have um so I just kind of, like, lost its luster. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I totally agree. Like, one of my m other negatives that kind of coincide with the overall, well, this is all the game has to offer. I really don't like these goal cards because mm -hmm. they're they're not all created equal. Like, some of them are like, have one of each type of attraction. Well, that's either super easy if all the ones that I on my turn that I need happen to be super cheap. Yeah. Um oh or in this case, oh that's nine bucks, that's seven bucks, that's six bucks. Like that's a lot of money for or me to try and, and I also have to try and fit it all on my board. And it's like, whoo man, bust a mask, but I got it. Three points. Because and it's like I just needed three underwater cities. That's also three points. Well and also like it can come down to like you're just getting screwed because no one, like, no one's taking mudslide, so I have to take mudslide, and I'm like, oh fuck, I didn't look at it right. Yeah, so that doesn't fit. Yeah, that's another good point. Yeah, it there's no cycling of rides. Yeah, it's just what it happens to be on top. It's not like oh, go there, look through the cards, and be like, I mean, huh? 
this is my theme park, which one do I want to put in? You know, that would make it a little bit more gamery. I know that this isn't, this isn't meant to be a heavier polyomino game, but it's like, hmm, I really need thrill. Yeah. Oh, Oh, crap, none of these have thrill. Mm -hmm. So, or it's like, I really need awe. And it's like, oh, okay, I'll do Mammoth Valley, um, because that's what can fit. Mm Mm-hmm. But because there's no active uh, mechanism that allows you to be like, well, I don't want this, cycle it to the bottom, right. you do get screwed on, well, no one wants Western, so I guess that that's never getting touched unless someone really wants the two joy and thrill. Yeah. That was the very first time I played this game, that was something I mentioned. I don't like the fact that what's on top, if no one gets it, that's just it. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, okay, well, I'm the only one who wants something from that pile, so... Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. But, I mean, even the one where you... I mean, yeah, you got a lot of points for your sci-fi ones. Yeah. But you actually didn't even have the goal card that got you three points for having it. Right. Uh, I was thinking about how would that synergize with the other one. And I was hoping that they would work together, but I didn't remember it well enough. Mm-hmm. So I passed on one. Yeah. My entire goal, whenever we were setting this up to go play, I was like, no matter what I do, I'm gonna get to the last... I'm gonna get all three of my tokens to the at end of these tracks. Yeah. To get what I thought was originally ten points. I forgot that there were only five. But that's still a 15-point swing. Yeah. And to do that, I didn't have to bust my ass on any rides. I didn't have to shell out and try and get a lot of money to, you know... Uh, expand. To expand... I had 10 attractions or 10 concessions. Yep. And that's how, and, then, and nobody can stop you from taking them. Just yep. which ones are being left. You know, about about third month I started going, is there a way that we can take all the ones that he wants? I, I remember nope. you, you saying that. And it's like, no, because no one ever took this from me. Right. So, But even that would just be one, preventing you from getting one you want. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and my lowest one was awe. Which I, I made it to the very end or the very beginning of that track, but well, what's also kind of annoying is that's 15 points if if anyone just makes it there. Right. It's not like you have to be in first. And also, since that was my goal, mm-hmm. I kept getting three points. That was a fif- that was 15 points because mm-hmm. I was always either first or second. Yep. So that was basically 30 points that I got right. out of my 56. Mm-hmm. So 26 I'm points. Sure Shut up. <laughs> That was 26 points that I got elsewhere, which was mainly advertising, because I never had to spend my money. Yep. So I just kept spending on advertising. Mm Mm-hmm. So that almost feels like that's the meta. I don't think it is. I feel like if other people would be more aggressive in trying to beat someone out on those tracks. No, I think you might have broken it. (laughs) (laughs) Because all you're trying to do is move up the tracks, and uh, the income really wouldn't matter much. Yeah. So just having enough attractions where you could buy your points every turn yeah. and having enough money. Like you get to draw three goal cards. You pick the one that's the hardest. You go for the two easiest ones. Yep. I got these. I mean, by, I mean, yeah, I had to buy three. So by round three, these were already done. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, now I'm just going to coast. Yeah, I, I, I think that might have been something they missed in playtesting because it does seem like you broke the system. Yeah, because it does come down to... Okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. I see no reason to not do that besides just choosing to play a different way. Yeah. But then now it forces other players to be like, well, we have to stop him, otherwise he's going to win that way. And that's not fun where it's like, or, oh, I'd like to build my theme park. Or we have to try to accomplish our goals better. Yeah. But those all cost a lot was, more money. 47? Yeah. Yeah, so 11 points. It's not bad, but... That's a lot. I mean, because these rides, it's not like they're, they're not turning out you know, eight points, mm-hmm. right? Which is also kind of weird that some of the, some of the rides that are massive, yeah, like that take. But they up, cost a lot more to build. They're harder to place, so they cost more to open up the space for it. Yeah, and then they cost to even get points off of. Yeah, it seems like they wanted you. The, this seems to be the game, the three tracks, because the high, the more expensive ones are the ones with the most thrill and and tracks. So they yep. want everyone to kind of compete on these. And it's like, so this is, the tracks are the game, and then these are just a means to the tracks. And then... Well, I want to play a polyomino game, not a track <laughs> That's game. what I'm saying, yeah. It's like, it's like this game is, like we said, is fun the first few times you play it, but yeah. then it's like, okay, well that's kind of, that's kind of it. And it, it's so finite of a game 
Yeah. I can't see any reason why they would make an expansion. They should make an expansion. More rides, more avenues for points. New. I hate. I really hate these cards. I hate the fact that they're just so stupid. Like, if it's going to be harder to do, yeah, then be worth more points. Mm. Yeah. Like, like the one to be highest on one track. Mm -hmm. You, you and I were competing, and I thought I just thought you kept wanting the worker. Until you right. kept hopscop like hopscopping me, hopscopping, hop skipping, hop scotching, S skipping over. Yeah, frog, frog <laughs> leaping, frog jumping, <laughs> leapfrogging. You kept leapfrogging me. Arm wrestling. <laughs> Thumb wrestling. Uh, you kept leapfrogging me, and I was like, oh, okay, he he needs that right. to get the three points. But also, the extra worker came in really, really handy. Yeah, yeah, it did. But at the same time, if I had just focused on thrill, just for sheer happenstance, that that's the one I just then you wouldn't be getting that extra worker because you wouldn't want to go back. That's true. Um, there were a couple of times I thought about it. Right. And then... And it's like, no, I'll stay there and get the point. And okay. then, yeah. The point, and also making sure that I'm in the lead. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I mean, overall, art is amazing. I Vincent Dutre art is some of the best in the business, in my opinion. I think, I think they do hit the nail on the head with the theme. I love the advertisement cards like oh, they're, yeah. they're kind of like postcards uh that old timey kind of thing where yeah. um it, it does fit that theme park theme but i don't know i think i'll do away with realism and just play dinosaur island or dinosaur world because it hits the theme park theme really well on top mm -hmm. of it being sci-fi with the dinosaurs All right um so yeah, uh, I don't really have a whole lot else to kind of talk about. Like, I've never lost this game, um, but not through any. I'm. It's not like I'm sitting here strategizing more. Literally, because there's nothing. You and you played two radically different ways, and they yeah. both worked. Yeah, I mean, this one was just okay. I'm gonna see if I can win by just getting all the way up on the top of the tracks. But and the easiest way to, and cheapest way to do that is concessions because they're free. I even looked it up. I was like, okay, this seems weird. I looked it up. It's like, nope, just take a concession and place it. That's mm -hmm. it. And because these, you can't block anyone. Right. There's nothing anyone can do from stopping me from doing that. Mm -hmm. The only tightness is, oh, I wanted that ride, mm -hmm. but because I played that way, I didn't care what rides you guys were getting. That's right. Um. So yeah, I mean, granted, I have never played this at four, so maybe a four-player game makes the tracks more contentious. But that's like, that's stupid. <laughs> like you don't want to you you want to play a polyomino or theme park game, not tracks well, the game. So yeah. the worker placement part of it is that flawed because there are just too many open spaces. I would say so. I I think that the freedom of it, and again, this obviously is meant to be more family friendly or lighthearted. I think yeah. it hits the nail on the head for that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this is a bad game. I just think that limited. It, it's very limited. Uh, so yeah, I think it's not that because there's too many spaces, but there's just there's too many. Anyone can go to the realtor. Anyone can go to the arborist. But I also feel like if they did tighten that down, it would make the game extremely annoying. Oh yeah. Like hey, in a three-player game, there's only two spots for the arborist. Like this is not a game that I feel warrants that. It right. makes no sense because it's not like we're all building one theme park together, right. There's it makes no sense for you to only be able to hire the arborist. And it's like, well, why can't I? It's my own theme park. Or maybe you can only visit... Each player can only visit each of those spots once per month. Oh, yeah. That would be another way that they could do it without limiting it by the, True. across the players. I think the other thing that they could do, and Kat kind of mentioned it at the end, was trees aren't negative points, are they? And I was like, no. Maybe they should be. That'd be so funny. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because that's the thing. It's like, if I were trying to go that route with this and the um, uh, and all the concessions, it's like, well, maybe, maybe trees should be worth negative points. It would cause me to have to get rid of some of them, at least. The only reason to get rid of trees is to make space for your rides, but you can also finagle these in a way that you can just keep you can just end up making enough room without ever having to get rid of the trees yeah but that costs a worker and money true every time you do it true this yeah. one costs a worker so you can't do something else with that worker yeah I was just double checking that game end there isn't any weird like tree thing That'd be there's, so not, there's not I knew there wasn't and what's also kind of it's like in a tie for uh, it's whoever has the shovel yeah oh or closest to the person with the shovel if the tie 
the first player isn't. No, well, it makes sense. The whole the whole game is based around playing these. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual point values of the tracks yeah. make the concessions worth a whole lot more. Yeah, and I that's the other thing, is the weird end of action bonus, like six to seven attractions for five points. Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel justified. I almost feel like it should be six to seven is ten points, eight or more is fifteen. I can see that. Like that. Because once you get to six, wow, you should really hit eight. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Because it's also yeah, they're probably thinking if you have six to seven rides, that's five extra points on top of the advertising you were probably getting. That's more than one every round. Because you got round. what an eighteen point swing because you had nine points for your rides and then nine points for the advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got 18 points for that, and you only had five rides. So if you had one more, that could have been another four points plus the five, so that would have been another nine points. Yeah, but again, because space, I don't have space, yeah. I would have had to use two workers. You had the extra worker pretty much this entire game. Except for one round. Yeah. Uh, except for, well, first and well, one other month. Yeah, I think but out three of the five them. rounds, three rounds you had an extra worker, yeah. and I was like, I'm not even going to try. I don't need it. Not that I knew I was going to win, but it was like, I will just see. Yeah, it's Let's see. not, not worth fighting. Your energy, yeah. Because yeah. you, you were fighting for all three. Yeah. But not against anyone. Just Right. Yeah. And I think the only way is also if one of you happened to get ahead of me on awe and took this from me. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But, again, I don't like playing games where my entire game is stopping someone else from doing something. Right. That's just annoying. Um, but, yeah. Again... Production quality is amazing. This game is is good. Like as a polyomino game, I like the uniqueness of the diagonal placement. I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, is it too much uh, tokens and things to handle? I really don't think so. It's really okay. just money and um, and then just these. Like these are also really good, I, and they're all unique shapes. I like yeah. that. I think that's that's really neat. It looks good on the table, like it's very concise. Yeah, there's a lot of other extra pieces, but I think it's all really good component quality. Oh, yeah. Like I say, I think if someone were to get it, they wouldn't be disappointed Right. the first couple of games. Yeah. And, I mean, there might be people who just enjoy doing the same things over and over again. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But it does beg for an expansion, and I would say probably a pretty big box expansion to just add more, just more stuff, yeah. Yeah. more rides. More, more objectives, more, more tracks. You could easily do like, a, like a country theme, like rides from other, like inspired by other countries. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. That. Yeah, that would be cool. A world, a real world's fair, you could say. That's true. Yeah, yeah that'd be, like, be pretty sweet. Or modular expansions so that the, yeah. the game itself would shift. Yeah, that's pretty much what. I, yeah, what I was saying. Big box modular expansion. Right. Hey, if you want. New goal cards, you know, take the base game ones out, put this new deck in, shuffle those, and they're they're variable in terms of points. Uh, add another track in. Here's new, unique, um, maybe special powers of certain rides. Um, I can see that. That would be pretty solid. I think they could get away with one big box modular expansion. But mm -hmm. probably won't. <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys got anything else on 10 Penny Parks? All right, scale of 1 to 10, uh, what would you guys give it? Five. Five? You think it's average? Yeah. I'll go six. I'm at six as well. Um, yeah, I think it's slightly. But after a couple more average. plays, it'll probably go down a little. <laughs> that's the thing, is like, that's going to be out of six. And it, this is one, if someone's be like, hey, you want to play? I'd be like, sure. Like, I would jump in and play, sure. but I'm not going to keep this. So All it's right. out of six right now, and it won't go down because I'm not going to play it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. All right. Well, that's our thoughts on 10 Penny Parks, everyone. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.